Hello there people of the internet, Matt Easton here of Scholar Gladiatoria and I noticed um, looking around on, on the internet that um, some people are under the impression that I only do sabre. This isn't true, in fact I fence all sorts of weapons and the two weapons that I most frequently teach are in fact military sabre and longsword according to the uh, treatises of, of Fiore. I say treatises because of course there's four versions but it's essentially one system. Uh, they're different, um, uh, different sort of snapshots, as it were, of his system from slightly different times, probably from slightly different hands. Uh, but that's for another video. I'll do other videos about um, Fiore, which I did do early in my video making career, um, and I haven't done for a long time, so I will get back to that. Uh, but some people are of the opinion that um, I don't do longsword. Well, uh, let's clarify that. I do teach longsword regularly. I don't fence it very regularly anymore, so they're half right, okay? Um, but nevertheless, I do literally teach longsword every other week. I teach longsword as, almost as much as I teach sabre, pretty much as much as I teach sabre. But in terms of uh, fencing, what do I actually fence? I fence predominantly sabre, small sword, rapier, sword and buckler, spear, bayonet, little bit of longsword, little bit of sword and shield, little bit of spear and shield. Basically I fence a lot of different weapons. Uh, so people out there, if you're wondering what I predominantly do, um, and, and who do I do it against? Well, I've spoken about competition. I haven't competed much um, in the last couple of years, a number of reasons, mostly because I have other responsibilities, I have other things to do with my time. I I'm, have four sources of income, so I'm fairly busy. Um, with um, antiques and my uh, day job and running scholar, doing YouTube videos, um, doing all this other stuff I do. But in addition to that, I do fence um, twice a week pretty much um, in my two clubs. So I do fence regularly. Um, I don't compete much anymore because it doesn't hold a lot of appeal to me, to be completely frank. I get to fence people from other clubs, clubs regularly because uh, they visit my club um, and uh, occasionally I have informal um, sparring meetups with people, but, um, but there we go. But in terms of competing, I in the last few years I've mostly competed in um, sabre and um, a little bit of rapier, um, and uh, yeah, and, and in melee games as well actually. I did compete, actually I tell a lie, I did compete once in 2017 which was in a melee tournament. I think we won the silver medal, silver or bronze medal, I can't remember anyway. We didn't win but we won a medal. Um, so I, you know, if I had more time basically I probably would get to some competitive events. But the point is I do regularly get to fence against because I've got a, an awesome freaking club, Scholar of Gladiatoria. Um, we've got several different um, groups around schools around around the country, um, but the the main one that I teach in is in West London, and we've got some really really excellent fencers um, who I've name dropped before. I name dropped them again, but you know, for example, Pedro who won the sabre in the Wessex League last year, and we've got Amir who wins loads of stuff as well. So I get to fence against those guys regularly. So I'm getting to fence some of the some of the top guys in the UK, which is great. Um, and uh, give them some bruises and get some bruises and all that kind of stuff. But um, Longsword, I want to give you something about Longsword because I do appreciate Longsword is still the most popular um, weapon in, in HEMA. Um, it's not, relatively speaking, as popular as it was some years ago because people have, much like myself, I was primarily a Longsword fencer and I fenced all over, you know, I fenced in um, tournaments all over Europe um, with Longsword back in the day. We're talking about like 15 years ago now, um, 10, 15 years ago. And um, and I moved on. I got more interested in Sabre and other things um, for a number of reasons. Um, but um, Longsword still is the most popular weapon, although lots of other people like me did go off and get more into Sabre or Rapier or, what, or Small Sword, whatever they're doing now. Okay, And I think, certainly in the UK currently, probably the most popular weapons are Longsword number one, probably um, Sabre number two, maybe equal with Rapier in number two, so let's call them joint second, Rapier and uh, Sabre. And then after that we've got various other things which are growing in popularity but are much less popular. So um, Basket Hill Backsword, for example, um, 
uh, small sword, sword and buckler, they're probably the main ones, lung massa to a lesser degree. Um, and of course there's ring and there's wrestling and there's dagger stuff as well, although that doesn't really have so much of a tournament or competitive scene, but it is nevertheless done a lot in the clubs. Um, and that's another thing I teach regularly as well, but I don't talk about on video that much, is, um, is dagger defense and dagger against dagger. Right, but talking about the long sword. So I study Fury's system and um, Whatever people say, um, there are differences, some quite notable differences between Fiore de Liberi's um, system of longsword, um, well it's a system of many weapons, but the way he uses the longsword, it's different in Fiore to what we see in the German systems from the same time and a little bit later uh, uh, than Fiore. Um, I'm not going to go into those differences now, um, other than to say one of the things that we get a lot, like that's really, really core, cool. not to just Fiore, but also Fiore, Vardi, Marozzo, and all of the Italians using uh, the longsword, um, is uh, essentially a guard or parry, okay? Now, this is something we find in the German treatises, not to say they don't have them, they do absolutely have um, simple stops, um, something like Kron, for example. Um, so Kron in Fiori's system is known as Corona or Frontale, which both mean a form of um, a crown or a tiara type thing that you wear on your head, okay? And this is essentially a parry or a guard. Okay, now what's interesting in Fiore is this is made, you can't see my leg in this video, but this is, it's my, my left leg is forward, and he shows the position guarding on the left hand side with the left foot forward in a giocolago in crossada, that means wide play cross or bind. Okay, and it seems to be with the cross guard pointed slightly outwards at the very least, okay, um, and notice that the elbows are flexed and near to the body. So what he's doing to defend against, say, the Oberhau or number one cut, the Fendente from the right hand side. So someone is stepping in with their right foot and cutting from the right hand side at my sort of head, neck, shoulder area, upper target up here. And he is simply putting the sword in the way to the side, much like a parry in cut in sabre, essentially. Okay, um, with the elbows close to the body. So what he's not doing is he's not bringing the right foot in. He's not giving a strike and he's not stretching the arms out, so he's not giving a strike. He is blocking, okay? It is a, a parry, um, a coverter, as he calls it, a cover. Now, it's not a colpi, so it's very important to point out, it's not like a zornhau, okay? So it's not like someone's giving me um, an oberhau or an overhand cut, and I'm flying off to the side with a traverse, with a passing footwork with my right foot coming out and crossing their sword essentially with a strike into their strike. I'm not, in my opinion, and I know there's at least one club that disagrees with this, but I think that I can make a strong argument for this. Um, I'm not cutting into a cut. What I'm doing is covering, staying on line, left foot forward. I'm not passing forward with the right foot forward. Elbows bent, I'm not reaching out with a cut. I'm covering, coverta, okay? Now my opinion is this is a guard or parry and very different therefore to a cut. It's a different action. If I was to cut, I'd pass forward with this, this foot or even if I didn't pass forward with that foot, the sword would be coming more out like this. My point would be lower down and my arms would be extended. This is not what Fiore shows in the Giocolago in Crusada. It doesn't look like this. It looks like this. The elbows are flexed, the point is up in the air. So my opinion is that's a guard or a parry. So that's some, um, it shouldn't be controversial for most people, but for some people it is controversial because some people believe that the defensive actions should all be more like a cut, okay? And I can understand why that's the case because admittedly, if we look at medieval and Renaissance systems, we do find very often that in order to defend against a, a blow, we give a blow, okay, at the person or at the person's weapon or somewhere in between or sometimes both. So uh, absolutely that does exist and whether you look at the Lichtenauer um, lineage or whether you look at Bolognese fencing, we do indeed find sometimes, and even in Vardy it's described, um, um, to an extent you could say in Fiore as well, cuts oppose cuts. Um, so absolutely that's in there. But specifically the Giocolago in Crusada, I believe is a guard or a parry. Now, one tip, pro tip, it's not a pro tip, I don't consider myself a pro, um, but I have noticed that people who 
use these guards, okay, which work very successfully. They work well with every weapon. Don't go, that doesn't work, blah, 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 because it does. Okay, parries and guards are used in loads of fencing systems from quarterstaff to saber to backsword to whatever, to longsword. Okay, so um, doing this, I have noticed that lots of people get injured. Where do they get injured? In the head, in the leg? No, they get injured on that thumb. And I'm gonna demonstrate why. This is gonna be a bit cat candid with the help of another feather here, okay? This is a slightly broken feather that I'm supposed to be fixing. This is Gavin's, incidentally, if you're watching this. If a blade comes down and runs down the blade, now if it's a feather, it will stop there usually, okay? But if it was a real sword blade and it run all the way down to there, you will notice, look what can happen right there. The blade can come down and clip you on the thumb. So what do you do? Lift the thumb up, okay? So, if you lift the thumb up, there is no longer, there is no longer the thumb, the end of the thumb sticking out just there in order to hit. So I think that if you're using this type of guard, um, Jocko Lago and Crusada, with the point up, with the elbows bent, guarding to one side, essentially like a two-handed version of cart from Sabre. If you're using this type of guard to defend against the cut coming in from this side, Stick the thumb up. If you stick the thumb up, it will be saved. Now, I've noticed that lots of people use um, gloves, gauntlets, essentially, that uh, in the modern world protect the thumb fantastically well, most of the time. Um, for example, the uh, Spez Heavies or the um, Sparring Glove, as they're called, um, or Ver Naaman's, various other gloves out there. Um, and you can get away with not putting the thumb up. Um, because you've got such good thumb protection. But even then, often one of the most vulnerable bits of a thumb is just about there, okay? Often you'll find there's lots of protection here and the end is okay. So usually speaking, if it comes down there, it'll be fine. But if you happen to stick it up slightly and the blow comes in here, it will really, really hurt because you don't have protection under there. But if you stick it up properly, it won't get hit. So even if you're wearing one of those super protective gloves, I think it's a good idea to st stick the thumb up. Now, people doing Lichtenau will note that obviously German longsworders, as they often get referred to, but Lichtenau longsworders, often do stick the thumb up with longswords and with messers, incidentally, in order to steer the blade, okay? So that achieves the same goal, although that's not why you're sticking the thumb up per se, although maybe chicken and egg, maybe it's how that idea began, just an idea. But by sticking the thumb up, you're also, most of the time, protecting the thumb from the opponent's um, sword, at least when the sword's orientated that way, okay, to that side, obviously not to that side. Okay, but with the thumb up, not only can you steer the blade, but you're also hiding the thumb behind the blade, so protecting the thumb. So to conclude, I would argue that whether you're doing Lichtenau or Fiore or Vardi or Marozzo or whatever, um, it's generally speaking, unless you've got some additional guard that makes this not necessary, like, a, like um, side rings or something, sticking the thumb up is generally speaking a good idea, regardless of whether you're doing these uh, winding type motions that require the use of the thumb actively. Even if you're just guarding, a la fiore, if someone's just swinging a sword at your head and you're going boom like that, instead of having the hand right up at the top of the grip and having the thumb vulnerable there, stick it up behind the sword and it will be safe. There is one other option if you don't like that for some reason, and that is, as I've mentioned in previous videos, don't hold the hand right at the top of the grip. If you hold it with just, you know, even a finger's width um, down from the cross guard, then admittedly you can't feel the edge alignment quite so well because you can't feel the cross guard, but it does keep your thumb safe. And as mentioned, if you get the thumb hit, it is not gonna be good for your, um, for your fencing abilities and the chances of you being able to effectively um, protect your life from an opponent who's really hell-bent on trying to kill you with a sword. Um, so there we go. Um, my little view when I'm teaching people to do Jocko Lago in Crusaders um, in Fiori, the way that I teach it based on my interpretations, I always stick my thumb up behind the back. I use this in sparring uh, when I do longsword sparring and um, it has saved my thumb. And I should mention as well, <laughs> the exact reason that I learnt to do this or decided to do this was from getting hit on the thumb repeatedly and getting fed up with it and going, hmm, why don't you just stick my thumb up and then that won't happen. Subsequently, I then looked in treatises 
and found that you can see hints of this um, being done. In fact, you can see it explicitly being done in the German treatises, but you can also see hints of it in uh, Vardy, for example, a little bit in Morozzo, and debatably in Fiori as well. Anyway, I hope that's been somewhat interesting. And just to remind you all that, yes, indeed, while I don't um, fence a huge amount of longsword anymore, I have been teaching longsword for um, many, many years now, and I do teach it every other week. So if you want to learn longsword and you're in London, come down to Scholar Gladiatoria um, every other Tuesday for longsword, and we're there every week from 7 pm. Cheers, folks! Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We have extra videos on Patreon, and you can follow us on Facebook.